Welcome everyone, my name is Jacob. Thank you for joining me. The product category that has exploded or grown quite a bit over the past few years are game bags. Now, uh, previous generations might have used a uh, pillowcase or some other cloth sack to put their elk quarters in. But, you know, th th there's a lot of new features now with game bags like reflective uh, features, handles, um, strength-rated par uh, paracord that cinches down. And when you look at game bags, you need something that's about the length of an elk quarter. Now this is a trekking pole. It's about 34 inches in length. And um, this is about the average length or about the, maybe a little more than the average length of an elk quarter. So what we're gonna do is look at a series of game bags, about 12 of them, and go through some of the features and benefits of each of them. In other videos, you might find people dropping weights or doing push-ups or pull-ups or whatever, some trying, trying to stress test the bag. And that may be nice, but the objective here is really to help you make a purchase decision and find where value and performance intersect. And so uh, all of these game bags on some level or some way can work and have worked. Again, even pillowcases can work. So uh, let's start with the assumption that you've killed an elk, or a, a Rocky Mountain elk, and uh, you want to pack it out, and you um, need something that is going to work for your particular situation. You're going to need about five bags, four of them, one for each quarter, and then a loose meat bag. So let's start from, we'll go from worst to first, and see, look at some of the features and benefits and pricing for each of the uh, 12 bags that are out there. We're gonna start with these Alaska game bags. Now, you've probably seen these in Sportsman's Warehouse or Cabela's or some other sports st store. They're cotton in nature. They stretch to about 48 inches in length. Um, they tear easy. Even though they're, they're stated to be reusable, I've used them for the elk that's sort of over my shoulder here and you know they're soaked in blood and you don't really feel like washing them and there might be a tear and they stretch in such a way that, that bugs can sort of get in there and lay eggs or what have you. So if you do use these, they're about somewhere between 30 and 50 bucks. You'll get four of them. Uh, you need to pack zip ties. You'll need to pack some rope. Uh, and so these come in at number 12 because of, of those dynamics. Uh, they weigh about one and a half, one pound and five ounces. And um, you know, I will say if you want the cheat sheet that goes through all 12, you can go to my uh, Instagram page or uh, Instagram site and click on the link tree, pro link tree in my profile. You can download this spreadsheet and some other spreadsheets and other resources for free. And, uh, you know, as we move on to number 11, I purchased some bags off Amazon called Shappy. And these are uh, polyester in nature. Um, they're 50 inches in length. They do have a drawstring, but I have a feeling that cord isn't, you know, I don't know what the strength test is on this, but who knows? It could break. But um, you get four bags. They weigh about one pound, 2.7 ounces. Polyester is generally a heavier fabric, and you can tell even, hopefully on the video, that this is probably not going to breathe real well. Uh, probably going to create more condensation and moisture in the bag mm -hmm. than I want. So um, just an FYI there, uh, but if you need some cheap game bags, 15 bucks, not a bad deal. Coming in at number 10 is the Allen Company Backcountry Imperial game bags. These are, uh, you get four bags, they're 40 inches in length, and uh, obviously um, these come in at 78 bucks. The, these would actually rank a lot higher if they were less expensive. Um, this is a really great set of bags, uh, even though you only get four. The um, right now I think on Amazon they're like 19 bucks, and so if this if they if that was a regular price, these would be, you know, in the top five I would imagine. But uh, they do have a, a reflective drawstring. They don't have any reflective nature on the bag itself, but these are a great you know great option coming in at number 11. It's really based on price and lacks some of the, the features uh, that some of the other bags that we'll be talking about have. So coming in at number uh, nine 
is the bag that I have behind me. This is a mystery ranch uh, bag and uh, has a, a, a drawstring. Um, it, they come with uh, handles. It has pockets here that, that fit on top of your mystery ranch pack. I'm sure they would work on other packs as well on the pack frame. And so these are really well designed and um, here's the problem. When you buy the elk kit, it's 160 bucks. You get, uh, I'm sorry, you get uh, five bags. The, the four quarter bags are the 60 liter bag. And the length of those 60 liter bags are 28, uh, 28 inches long. Well, we just talked about an elk quarter being 34 inches long. So you're gonna have several inches sticking out of those bags. If you want something that's longer, it's sold separately. It's an 80 liter bag. And that is, uh, they're $40 each. This is an 80 liter bag behind me. And so I thought that was really surprising and disappointing, especially with the expense of these bags, to, to have to purchase a set of bags to, to come to find out that they're not maybe long enough to cover the end of the quarter. So that's one that ended up at number nine. Number eight is the, um, the Graxaw Ultralight XL. These are $100, I know these are very popular. You get five bags, they're all full, full size bags. You don't, there's no loose meat bag. But even though you, you get five full size bags, it comes in at 6.25 ounces, which is by far the lightest set of game bags. Now they're 33 inches in length, uh, which is great. But um, the, uh, there's no reflective properties, there's no handles. So that obviously cuts down on weight. But there's also, um, the bag is orange, but it also states on the website that these are not made for meat on bone. And so really the assumption has been you've, processed, you've killed a Rocky Mountain elk, you have quarters with meat on bone that you want to wrap up, set to the side or hang and cool. You may cut down the length of that bone to get that heat out, but I personally like to keep meat on bone for the structure of it. I don't want the meat sort of collapsing in on itself and creating and sort of trapping that heat. So um, that's why this, this set of bags came in at number eight. Um, but I do, you know, I understand, you know, if you want something that's lightweight, doesn't take up a lot of room, and uh, you know, these, these could be a great option. They're made in Missouri. So, uh, you know, fantastic option for a lot of different hunters. Coming in at number seven are the born and raised meat bags and they come in at $150 you get five bags 1.45 ounces 41 inches in length is the the main quarter bags the loose meat bag is 15 and a half by 28 inches which is very similar to a lot of the other loose meat bags so it's a nylon blend um, it does have reflective properties but but here's what's interesting you get a full length zipper on these bags the bags lay flat, and then you place the quarter on, and then you zip it up. It's also antimicrobial, made in the USA. Uh, it's shaped like an elk quarter, so it's sort of tapered. And it, but one of the things that they share is that it's DWR treated, obviously to, to sort of repel water. But I don't know how I feel about a having DWR next on my food, and I don't really care for the zippers, even though I think it's innovative. I could be, one of those zippers fails, all of a sudden you just have an expensive blanket. And so um, that's why it came in at number seven, and also combined with that price. Number six is the Badlands uh, game bags. You get five. This is the heaviest of the nylon bags, 1.8 ounces. The largest bag is 40 inches in length, so you just check that box. The loose meat bag is 15 by 29. Uh, it does have reflective properties. Uh, but it, it, it does not have handles. It does have uh, loops, which a lot of the game bags do have. And this allows you to sort of strap it, keep it strapped in tight with your bag. Coming in at uh, number uh, five is the, um, let's see here. I lost track. Oh, there it is. Number five, the Kuyu game bags, $158. You buy them individually. You don't. There's no kit, and you and it 
suggest that you buy six, uh, you know, four quarter bags and then two loose meat bags based on the website. That's comes in at one pound, 7.8 ounces. And that is, you know, again, one of the, the heavier options. And it's, um, I like the design of the bags. They have a blaze orange side panels. It's double stitch seams. Uh, the outside of it is reflective, but you have to buy two bags. So it increases the cost, it increases the weight. Coming in at number four is the Black Ovis bags, $110. You get five and it's one pound for these five bags. The largest bag is 37.25 inches. So it checks that box. It's nylon and spandex. Has a solid loose meat bag. Um, doesn't have handles, uh, but it doesn't have loops. So it's very basic in that, that way. But um, you, you know the price and the weight sort of push it, the Kuyu bag down to number five. And that's why this Black Ovis ended at number four. Coming in at number three, you have the Caribou Gear Meat on Bone game bags at $85. You get five bags. They come in at one pound, two ounces, 40 inches, that largest bag, saw the largest loose meat bag at 16 by 30, 300 strength, 300 pound strength paracord. Doesn't, it does have reflective properties, doesn't have handles, but it does have loops and um, really solid set of game bags. Number two, is um, a real newcomer to the, the game bag space. At $65, you have the Go Hunt bags. Five bags, one pound, 2.2 ounces. The largest the quarter bag is 35 inches in length, so check that box. The problem here, I mean, they have, they're have they reflective in nature, they have handles, uh, drawstrings, tapered design, really, really well thought out, except the loose meat bag. So. Their loose meat bag for the Go Hunt is 13 by 20. That's what this is essentially the size of, 13 by 20. Most loose meat bags are this size, the size of this. If you can see this. So you can see there's a big difference here in size between the Go Hunt loose meat bag and most loose meat bags. And so then it, you have to figure out what are you going to do with that rib meat or that neck meat that doesn't fit in. And so, you know, it was hard to put that at number two because of that, but that's the biggest weakness, um, I would say, with the, with the Go Hunt bags. They have great price, great features, but that loose meat bag, it, it could be a problem. Coming in at number one are the Argali Meat on Bone they're $82. You get five game bags. They come in this, this bag. A lot of times I like to take my game bags out and, and, and shrink rack them in, either in a ball or, or shrink wrap them flat. But all, a lot of bags come in these type of drawstring bags. Um, so this is the Argali. You can see it has a drawstring has loops, it's nylon, it's uh, you can, relatively thin, you can tell that it's gonna breathe, uh, seems to be sewn together very well. And so at $82, you're getting a really good value with five bags, 15 ounces, so it's under a pound. And um, you know all that combined brought this to be the number one set of game bags that I would recommend for you. Now, obviously, you're going to have to figure out what you want um, based on, you know, maybe you like the idea with the, the zippers, with the uh, born and raised guys, or some of the other features that some of the other bags offer. But hope you found this helpful. Hope it helps you make a purchase decision and see sort of where that intersection of value and performance lie. Please like and subscribe. And if you have other categories you'd like me to sort of dive into, please let me know. Best of luck this season and talk to you soon. All the best.